Becoming a software developer and landing a software job is a dream for many people. It provides a good work-life balance and it's also fun to do. It's a fun to be a programmer. But is it too hard? Does it take a particular kind of person to become a software developer? Maybe you're one of these people you're asking yourself if you have what it takes to become a programmer. Maybe you're wondering if it's worth it to try and learn programming and try to switch careers. What does it really take to become a software developer? About a month ago, I made a video about the difference between noob coders and proficient coders. And I got some interesting comments from a user named Tony WTYT. He said that the difference between proficient coders and noob coders is the ability to form a mental model. If you read or hear a requirement or program behavior, a proficient developer needs to be able to convert that into reasonable code. And he's not talking about the intricate details, but the basic ones. And in this other comment, he expounds further. He says that a proficient coder should be able to convert written or verbal information into basic coding building blocks. So I think what he's trying to get at here is that a software developer should be able to have some sort of high level thinking when it comes to first approaching a problem. When you ask this question online, what it really takes to be a software developer, you see a lot of responses that are like this. A lot of responses talk about the qualities that good software developers must have. And I agree with most of these responses. I agree with Tony here. And a good software developer should be able to think at a high level how to approach a problem. But I think there are some steps that are missing here because when I was first starting to learn how to code, I couldn't do what Tony was saying. I couldn't do any of these kinds of things because I was new. I, I didn't have any experience in programming, but it was only when I had experience in programming that I was able to have these kinds of qualities. And so all that to say is, I think that all of these kinds of skills and qualities that proficient software developers must have, they can be acquired through a certain set of prerequisites. So in this video, I'll be going over those prerequisites that you need to acquire those skills and qualities of a proficient software developer. And I think doing so will actually help you understand what is really entailed if you really want to switch careers or if you really want to become a software developer, what is at stake here? What, what do you really need to have? And in so doing, I'll be answering the question, what it really takes to be a software developer. So let's discuss. All right, so prerequisite number one, is time and dedication. If you look at the success stories of people who went into a coding bootcamp and then got a job after, or those people who were self-taught and got a job after, you'll see that they spent a lot of time and work into learning how to program. And the key idea I want you to get from this point is that becoming a programmer is not just another hobby. You can't expect to code a Saturday here and a Saturday there or whenever you feel like it and then become a software developer. You need to have a system and plan in place for you to learn the coding languages and tools that you need. Some clients that I've worked with and people that I know personally that are trying to get into programming have had this kind of hobby attitude towards programming. And I think that's fine in the beginning. If you're just, if you just wanna know what it's like to program and see if you would actually enjoy it, I think that's fine. But if you decide that you wanna switch careers, then you really need to spend more time and have an actual plan for getting into the industry. I like comparing programming languages with verbal languages. For verbal languages, sure, in one weekend, you can learn how to ask where the bathroom is. You can learn how to order at a restaurant or how to ask directions. Yeah, you sure you can learn that in a couple of weeks. But if you wanna become fluent at the language, you really need to spend a certain number of hours and have a certain plan in place to actually learn the language. And this leads to the second prerequisite that I have and that is practice. I've mentioned this many times on the channel. You can't really learn how to program if you're just watching tutorials. You really need to go out there and practice and build something. I've grown a lot by building a lot of different kinds of programs and applications. And the first kinds of programs that I encourage you to build are toy projects. And in these toy projects, you just want to learn how the programming language works, how the different libraries work together, and just get a sense of what's possible and what are the potentials with this kind of programming language or tool. And if you're in the beginning of your programming journey, I have a free guide that will help you out called my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a guide where I teach you how to build four toy projects. And these toy projects are just there to teach you how to use your programming language and just to get an idea of what's possible with the language. You can find that guide in the link in the description and you can download it for free. And if you download it and pay attention to what it says, you'll definitely learn some fundamental programming concepts that'll help you in your software development journey. I think it's a good resource because it gives you a 30 day plan 
And then with that plan, you can set yourself up to be on a good pace to become a software developer. Building these toy projects are really key because they're kind of like building vocabulary for your programming language. And if you're able to build enough toy projects, you can start doing what Tony was suggesting, which is to the ability to form a mental model. And he was getting at this idea where you take verbal information and then you can translate it into actual code. And that's what's happening when you build these toy projects. You build that vocabulary and then you're able to translate different ideas in your head into actual applications. And then that's when you start to build real world applications. And what I mean by real world applications are just applications that you can actually apply in the real world. Some sort of application that actually helps you in your everyday life or might, that might be helpful for a business, for example. And as you build these real world applications, you start to get a feel for the kind of complexity that code bases can have. And then you start to see what kind of challenges and what kind of mistakes you may make as you're building these programs. And all of that experience is really key to helping you become a software developer. All right, the third prerequisite that I came up with is curiosity and interest. You have to be actually curious and interested in programming. If you're just looking at programming as a means in order to get a higher salary and a better work-life balance, then I think you'll be disappointed. Proficient software developers are not content with just building a program and getting it to work. They really care about the programming languages themselves and they have a curiosity of how it works and the kinds of potential that they can have with their programming language. And they have this constant desire to learn other kinds of languages too. I've observed this a lot in my coworkers over the years and even in myself. And that is, is that we like to do a lot of experiment code. We like to make these programs just for the sake of understanding our programming language better. And these are kind of like toy projects. And we do this because we're naturally curious and interested in what the computer will do if we code something in a certain way. Self-learning is a key part of being a software developer, and that was my story for many years in my career. When I started off, I only knew how to code in C. But then after that, my, my first job, they asked me to code in C++. And then they moved me onto another project where I had to code in C++, Python, and Java. And then they moved me to Android development, asked me to code in Android development. And I had to code in Java, basically. And then after that, they moved me to web development, and then I learned JavaScript. And so it, the list goes on. And when I went to my second job, I had to learn C Sharp. So I'm constantly learning, constantly self-learning. And as you grow in your software development journey, as you grow in your career, because technologies are always changing over time, you need to be able to adapt and learn other languages too. And that leads me to my fourth and final prerequisite, which is resilience. Being adaptable and patient when it comes to coding is really key to being a software developer. I've had many experiences looking at code day by day by day and not having any confidence that I'll be able to finish the task. But as each day progresses, I make a little progress each day and a little progress each day leads to me actually finishing the task. There will be many times when you don't feel like you have the control that you want and you feel frustrated because you don't understand how the code works. But I recommend you just keep pushing at it and find encouragement because especially if you're a beginner, there's always going to be someone out there who can actually give you some pointers and point you in the right direction. And if you just make little steps toward those little directions, you'll finally get to where you're trying to head to. Instead of focusing on the things that you don't know or the things that you can't control, focus on the things that you do know and the things that you can control and let those things bring you closer and closer to gain more understanding of the problem at hand. The key here is that with enough time, with enough persistence, and with enough determination, you'll eventually get to your desired destination. All right, so those are the four prerequisites to becoming a software developer, time, practice, curiosity, and resilience. So if you have time, practice, curiosity, and resilience, then you can be a software developer. And I want you to notice that these four prerequisites don't really have much to do with your natural born intelligence, IQ, qualities, or characteristics, but they have more so to do with your mindset. And that's because I believe that anyone can become a programmer if they set their mind to it. 
So do you have what it takes to be a programmer? I'd love to hear your thoughts on which of these four you really need to work on in order to become a better software developer. And if you have any other ideas, I'd love to hear from you also, what kinds of other ideas do you have for what it takes to be a software developer? All right, like I mentioned earlier, if you're just starting off in your programming journey and you don't know where to start, you can download my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a 30 day guide where I teach you how to build those four beginner programming projects. It's really beginner friendly and I go step by step on how to build each one and go through the tutorials that you need to build each one. So download that in the link in the description. All right, that's it for this week's video. I hope it really helped you out and encouraged you to become a software developer. And if it really helped you out, give you some good insight, please like, share, or subscribe to the channel. And if you have any other questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section and I'll be sure to answer you there. And I'm Henrik and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.